Today, I am joined by Mike Proctor, one of uh, the amazing agents on our team. And we're going to be talking about utilizing your sphere as the easy button in real estate. And we know there's no easy button, but Mike is going to break down four distinct strategies on how to uh, interact with your sphere so that when it's time for them to buy or sell, it's a no-brainer to choose you. You're not going to see on, on Facebook that they use another realtor and that breaks your heart. He's going to show you exactly how to do it and doing it the right way so that way you're not being the annoying billboard or commercial that we all know those agents to be. That's this week's ep- uh, That's on this week's episode of Real Estate Success, the Whistleway Podcast. Today, I am joined by one of, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but one of my favorite podcast guests, one of my favorite agents on our team, Mike Proctor. Uh, Every time I hear Mike talk either to our team or I've gone and filmed him at conferences or other offices, and I'm like, I know Mike. And then he gets up and starts talking. I'm like, oh shit, Mike is smart. Um... Every time I, I'm I'm shocked by how smart this man is Mike's because I because I already know him and he's my buddy. Um, but what you're about to hear today is going to be so gold. We're going to be talking about how working your sphere is is making is the easy button to your real estate business. People are like that doesn't make any sense. Well, hear Mike talk and you'll figure it out. Mike, welcome. Take notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thanks. Mike, you've been with Whistle for uh, six years. Six years now. Yeah. Um, and it's been so great to see you not only grow your business, but grow as a leader in this company to constantly help people out, constantly give feedback. I hear you on the, the, the huddles every morning. And even when you're not hosting it, you go, oh, and do this, 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 this. And I go, that's so freaking smart, Mike. Um, so today we're going to talk about working your sphere, right? Any agent that's been in the business long enough is going to tell you their sphere should be one of their top three sources of business. And... Your sphere should be your absolute favorite source of business to work. Is that right? Without question. I I know one of the biggest feedbacks that I've gotten, because as as a mentor, um, I hear a lot from new agents or even existing agents that I've just picked up as a mentee. Um, They're they're scared of being that guy or that girl, right? They don't want to be the the walking billboard of real estate to their friends and family. So a lot of times your sphere gets neglected. And, and almost ostracized from your business. And we're cutting off our, our nose to save our face kind of a thing, right? Um, so yeah, that's, I think it's, it's really apropos that we talk about how utilizing your sphere and staying in connection with your sphere uh, is the easy button when it comes to helping people sell real estate. And there's absolutely, without a doubt, we all know this person, a wrong way to work your sphere. <laughs> absolutely. And, and so if you're thinking, oh, God, they're going to... No. And, and I'll tell you a personal example of mine. I remember after high school, uh, I was working photography full time, and I would reach out to my friends, right? Just like hit them up on Facebook Messenger. And finally, after I was talking to this one person, she was like, every time we talk, it's about your photography business. I don't fucking care. And I was like... Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like I didn't know I was that guy and I was doing it wrong a thousand percent. That's changed my mindset. But on the other side, like you said, they get neglected. Uh, and, and what I talk to our agents about, I say, do you think you're better than the average realtor in San Diego? Let's play this game, Mike. Do you feel you're better than the average realtor? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you're listening to this podcast, I would assume you're better than the average realtor because there's so many that don't do anything, right? Yep. So if you think you're better... Do you think you're do, you're helping or hurting when you work with a friend or family, help them buy or sell? Helping them without question. You're absolutely. Because if they don't go with you, they can go with a below average realtor. Yep. A- and we had a client come through and they said they, they ended up buying a house with us. And they said, well, you know, I want to be cognizant. And I was working with another realtor for three years and, and I don't want to hurt their feelings. And my first thought was, you should sue that realtor. Yeah. <laughs> you went for three years. The, the home prices jumped How up dare 12, them. 15%. The interest rates tripled. You should sue that agent. Yeah. And so if you look at it as I'm better than the average realtor and I'm going to help my friends and family better than anyone else will, if you look at it from that perspective, you being a resource to them, or, or I guess you neglecting them, is you being a bad friend. Well, it's funny because when I first got into real estate, it was probably three weeks into being a realtor. 
I was in a class and there's a whole room full of us. There's probably 15 people in the class. And the instructor tells us, I want everybody to take out your cell phone, start with A, call them, tell them that you're a realtor and just catch up and go down the line. He's like, you've got an hour. You should be able to easily make 30 phone calls. 90% of the people in the class were like, well, I, I, I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm going to be bothering them. And, and they, this is, this is really uncomfortable for me. I'm kind of a dick. So I was like, give me your phone. I'll call them. And the instructor laughed and they were like, I want you to understand this is real life. If you don't call them, someone else is going to. Mm -hmm. These people that are in your phone, your sphere, they mean something to you or they've meant something to you in your life. Enough for you to have their name and phone number in your phone. And who is going to take better care of your friends and your family than you? Absolutely. But what people don't connect the dots with is just because you've informed somebody once or you've made one post that you are a realtor, that doesn't mean they all now know they're obligated to use you for your services. Just the same way as you probably don't use them for what they do for a living. Are they a mechanic and you take your car to them for all needs? Probably not. If they followed up with you occasionally and let you know they wanted your business, you'd probably much more likely bring your vehicle to them. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? A hundred percent. And 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 th like you said, you're gonna they're gonna take good care of you. Like you're gonna take good care of them. Right. There's that trust built up, and there's that relationship. I know I will go above and beyond for my friends and family way more often than a stranger. Yes. I, I mean, it's clear. And. Having a phone call with someone that I went to high school with that I liked is way more fun than trying to get someone on the phone that filled out a form from your website nine months ago. Right. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah. That's hard. And then they finally get them on the phone and they don't know you and you have to build rapport and you have to do a lot of work to just get to the point that your sphere already is. Well, here's the thing, man. Like the first story you talked about was how your experience of being an entrepreneur, right? A photographer. Yep. And you knew the thing was to reach out to friends and family, people you already have an established relationship with. Yep. However, you did it in such a way that was all about you. 100%. It was self-serving. So you were just advertising. Yeah. Is what you were doing. I, I was being a commercial. Right. No one wants a and commercial in their, like, There's a out. reason we fast forward commercials, mm -hmm. right? Nobody wants that shit. Yeah. But if we flip that, and we make it selfless conversations, right? And when we reach out on social media, we do it with intention. It's not arbitrary conversations. We reach out strategically and we let people know, hey, I was thinking about you, right? I, I remember a couple months ago, you posted you got a new job. How's that going? Send. So I want to get right? some strategies like, on this. So that, that's so when we shift from selfish communication to selfless communication, the result is compounding, right? Because people love to talk about themselves. I did. Well, that's everybody I mean. does, <laughs> right? Well, there's also the law of reciprocation. Mm -hmm. If I ask you how you're doing, if I ask you how your job's going, if I ask you how your family is doing, etiquette states you then have to do it back. Absolutely. So if I want to talk about real estate, well, I'm going to ask you about your job. <laughs> because after you go off on how much you are loving it or hating it or whatever, you're going to, if you're, if you're a decent human being, which most of the people in my sphere are, they're going to go, well, how's your work going? And a lot of times when I'm doing my reach out through social, it's to people that I went to high school with, haven't talked to since, but we've been Facebook friends forever. Mm -hmm. So they may or may not know what I do for a living. 
So I'll ask, hey, I noticed this, how's it going? To prompt and kind of provoke the conversation. They then answer sometimes. Sometimes they just ghost me and that's fine. That <laughs> I don't deserve an answer, <laughs> right? I haven't earned that. So when they respond, it's usually a, a story about what's going on in that realm of their world. And then they will immediately ask, what's going on with your work? And it's a very ambiguous, open-ended question. And a lot of times they don't know or don't remember what you do. That's why it's like, so how's work going for you? How is your occupation that I'm yeah. not quite sure of what it is? What do right? you do again? But, and then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll respond with a story. Oh my gosh, I was showing a house the other day. There was somebody in the shower. So it's not every day you get to see houses and boobs all at the same time. He was really nice though, so everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, and it makes people oh. like, holy cow, one, oh, that's right, you're a realtor. You sell houses. <laughs> but I just did it. I, I introduced the concept in such a way that's that's not grimy and sleazy and and like, oh, you're here to talk about selling houses. <laughs> it's great. Interest rates are this. Would you like to buy or sell or refund? <laughs> totally, right? No, it's it's an it, it, it's an anecdote that, that people are gonna remember. They may even go and be like, oh my God, I, I have a friend, because now I'm a friend. Mm -hmm. I've got a friend that's a realtor. He told me this story, right? Now I'm a topic of conversation where it's like, now, when I message in the future, it's not, oh, there's another commercial, fast forward to the content. Mm -hmm. No, it's Mike wanted to know about me. And then he told me something funny. Then he told me something of substance that had nothing at all to do with me asking for anything. Did you with me? A hundred percent. Okay. A hundred percent. So strategy one is to DM people on social media and have a conversation about them. Totally. Start with that. Yes. Do you have any um and do you have any rhyme or reason how you do things? I know what what I always try and do is if someone pops into my head mm -hmm. and th this is not a great you can't build a strategy on this. But if, if I think of someone, I try and call that person as soon as possible. Totally. Hey, I was thinking about you. How are you doing? But again, you can't if I do that, I'm not going to get through everyone on my phone because I don't think about everyone on my phone. So right. do you have a strategy of how you DM people? Yeah. So I I block my contacts into like 20s. Okay. And I do a new 20 every day. Um, I know there are people that do it by birthday. And I'm not a fan of that because uh, I'm sure you've heard the red ocean strategy, mm -hmm. the blue ocean strategy, right? Yeah. Where the red ocean is where everybody is. And you're just one of the million. Mm -hmm. I like to go blue ocean where I am one in a million. Yeah. Right? Because everybody sends them shit the day before, the day on, the day after their birthday. Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting blown up. You're just lumped into the red ocean. Mm -hmm. I, I would prefer to engage with them that doesn't have to do with when everyone else is engaging with them. Yeah. And that's why when I do reach out... I'll reference something that I saw on their post from three weeks ago, uh, from four months ago. Hey, I saw your kids just started over at such and such elementary school. How are they liking it? Parents love talking about their kids and schools. And right? they love talking about schools they love, but they love talking about schools they hate. Well, that's the whole <laughs> review thing, right? People only submit reviews when you either really screw up or really blow their socks off. Well, really if blow their socks off or just kind of screw up at all. Yeah, they love if, it. <laughs> if you just do your job, you're not getting a review, yep. right? So I'll, I'll provoke conversation through stuff that I saw a while ago that they posted, right? It's a public post. I'm like, oh, hey, I remember you did this thing. How did that go, right? And it, it's funny because we talk about like the five Ds of real estate, right? The the the, the reason people will buy or sell homes. It's a divorce, diploma, death, death disease, and deployment, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there's probably a handful of other ones that are thrown in there, but those are the the strategic five. So when I see those types of posts. My son just started high school. 
here in the not so distant future, there's going to be an empty bedroom in that house. Right. Mm -hmm. We just got engaged. Yeah. You're probably going to need to buy a house soon. Or depending on the age, maybe they have their separate homes. They're, they're going to go into one. Totally. Yeah. Right. You know, my father just passed away. Well, number one, I'm going to send condolences. I'm, I'm going to let them know that I give a shit about them as a human and that sucks and I'm sorry. But I'm also going to keep in mind, not on the initial conversation, but I'm going to keep in mind there may be a downsize. There may be a probate. There may be a trust. There may be something that I can help alleviate some stress with, mm -hmm. right? Because in all of those five Ds, there also comes anxiety, stress, and problems. Yeah, well, it's the unknown. Well, yeah, we are problem solvers. That's what we get paid for, right? My paycheck is in direct relation to the difficulty of the problem that I solve. So if I'm engaging with people consistently, just, hey, I saw this. You're awesome. I miss you. I hope you're doing well. Tell the family I said hi. We should get the families together and have a barbecue. You guys should come over and go swimming. Just engage and consistently in front of your sphere. Then they have one of these 5D life events that happens. And you, like normal, this isn't out of the blue. This is normal. You reach out and you're like, Brian, you know, congratulations. I saw you guys got engaged. I couldn't be more excited for you. You know, what, what, what's the timeline? What do your plans look like? And all of a sudden you start thinking out loud of the future pacing of the, the life that you're building. And it's, well, shit, maybe we should talk to you about buying a house. And you're like, oh, maybe you should. I'm glad you thought of it. <laughs> I right? Love, it's, yeah. it's about being in front of them when they're ready to make the move. Not just being in front of them. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I actually put this as a strategy two. It's kind of strategy one. It, you, you have to do strategy one to do strategy two. Yes. Because reaching out again, I'll, I'll say the bad way. I'm so sorry. Your dad just died. Do you need to sell his house? I can help mm, you. And even if you're God, coming, that hurts me, even if oh. you're coming with like, I know they have to sell his house. I, I like, like, even if you go with the best of intentions, you're coming off as a douchebag. Like you are. 100%. And so the fact that you've been in communication, it wasn't, oh, the last time they they sent me a message was about inviting me to the open house. And the time <laughs> before that was asking if they wanted a home bot report. And the time before yeah. that was, are you looking to buy? And then you see- Oh, you mean it's always about real estate? Right. And, yeah. then, and then you see, I'm sorry, your dad just died. You're like, I know what you're doing. Yes. You're going to say you want, and that's not the time to do it. Yep. So, so, but I put Do you this want photography? A, dude, <laughs> I've, I've been asked to photograph funerals and I haven't. Oh, that's weird. It's weird. Yeah. Um, but so strategy two is I, I say focus on the five Ds, but you have to do strategy one of, of stay in contact with them. Yes. So pay attention for that, of that. And I love how you, I was going to correct you and I'm glad I didn't when you said, oh, they just started high school or they're in their junior year. Don't wait until they say, hey, my son just moved to Arizona. You want to sell your house? That's like, it's too late. That's my point. It's too late. Yes. It has to be consistent. Yep. So there's a pitfall here too, because social media is our escape. Mm -hmm. That's like we get in bed, we start scrolling, getting ready for going to sleep. Like that's our escape as a society, right? It's almost like entertainment. It is. Right? So, well, yeah, not almost. It is entertainment. And the reason I say almost is because it's it's a lead source for me. It's business first, then entertainment. So when I pick up my phone, when I scroll on my computer for prospecting, it's strategic. I have intention. I'm not just scrolling and watching reels because those are fun. That's my entertainment that I use social media for. So you have to be very diligent and you have to be very specific about your time and the intention while you're on social media and you have to differentiate to yourself, this is my prospecting, not my scrolling, right? So you go to your 20, like I have the 20 that I pick out each day that I do and I go to their profiles on Instagram and on Facebook, right? So because sometimes people don't post the same on both. Mm -hmm. So I will go to both pages for each individual 
and I will go scroll through their feed and see what they've posted, what pictures they've posted. It's stories, their highlights, all sorts of yeah. It's very detective, mm-hmm. right? I will scribble notes about each one and then I will be strategic about the messaging that I send for them, right? And I, I'll go in and I'll like and I'll comment on stuff, but then I'll DM specifically about a particular post. And I would say 30%, I will get almost immediate responses, but about 70%, I end up getting a reply. So yeah, right? it's close, so, I mean, the, close to 100%. The I mean, that, that engagement is 100%. that I get is, it, it makes up for the circle prospecting that I do, mm-hmm. right? Where I'm just getting kicked in the teeth the whole time and mm-hmm. I have like an 8% conversion. It's right, and it's like, oh, that's painful. So I shift gears to this where I get to talk to you about your kids. I yeah. get to talk to you about the vacation you just went on. I get to talk to you about, you know, all the cool, fun shit that you're doing in life, and you engage with me, right? And and it's that step one of consistent engagement that earns me the right to ask for business when it shows up with the five Ds. So what I added, so strategy one, consistent communication on social. 100%. You just got to consi- like, comment, but I love what you say of, of DMing. Because, and even going back three posts and being like, oh my God, I saw I saw what your, your, your summer trip to India, that looks so great. Right. Again, you're in the blue ocean. When they posted it, everyone was commenting. Now they haven't heard about it in yes. weeks. So I love that. Strategy two, and this, this all feeds on itself. You can't just do one of these. No. It's, it's, maybe it's strategy A, B, and C, and you have to do A before B. Um, it's focusing on the five Ds. Notice when they have one of those events, they will either, when they have it or when something is coming up. Um, ooh, I don't know if I want to talk about this. Maybe I will. I will. <laughs> I always do this. And I, uh, but like, if you see a situation coming up where a, a D is inevitable. Uh, maybe there, there's a conflict in the Middle East and you know that this person will get deployed soon. Or, well, I said I want to talk about this, you see that your friend's parent is sick. They just got put into hospice. And, and like, like, so keep No, so it- here's, here's the strategy, because literally I, I could show you messages where I'm doing this right now. So you see your friend's parent has just been put into hospice. So what you do is because you're a good fucking human being, you reach out and you're just like, hey, I get it. Like, this is rough. If you need food, if you need meal delivery, if like, I'm here in the in the neighborhood, I'm around the corner. Like, But if, Mike, what's the ROI on that? It, good human being. Like, yes, that's, thank you. That's the ROI. <laughs> that's, you yes. get to look your kids in the eye and be like, I'm a good person. Yeah. Right. Like that's what that is. Yes. If it never yields business, I'm fine with it. Yes. Because you know what? If I could add a little bit of comfort, if I can add some ease, if I can alleviate some stress from a person that I consider a friend or a family member, then it was worth it. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. And karma, right, will come around because the more good I put out, the more good I get back. And I don't focus on what I get back. I focus on what I provide. And the more I provide, I, I live in abundance. Does that make you, you with me? A thousand percent. Okay. A thousand percent. That's the thing, man, is like, if we have that scarcity mindset of like, well, what am I getting out of it? Fuck off. Like, this is the wrong business for you to be in. This like, is not a tit for tat business. This Well, and it, it the, the, the beautiful thing about this business is when you don't treat it tit for tat, when you do just pour into the people around you, it's it's synergistic, right? It, it just flows into one another and it builds upon itself and you get a momentum that it, it's unstoppable. And when you start that type of business where you're just selflessly pouring into those around you, you don't have to worry about where your next next escrow is going to come from. You don't have to worry about the 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 tit for tat items because they self sustain. Yeah, right. And this reaching out to twenty people a day and engaging with them on them and and focusing on them that is the pouring into people that we need to do 
to elevate our business? A, a thousand percent. So focusing on the 5D strategy two, strategy three, having intentionality in your social media time and utilizing it as a lead source. I, for now, now it has been ruined like all my other ones. Uh, Facebook is a business only platform for me now. Instagram, mm -hmm. like I go there and it's real estate post, real estate post, real estate post, ad, real estate post. Yeah. And I'm like, th th it's not entertainment. It's, it's, I enjoy it, but it's, it's work. I'm not going to sit there at home and be like, let me read this. I'm like, it's, it's like emails. It's not yes, fun. Totally. Um, TikTok has now been ruined. That was my, my <sighs> entertainment source. Oh, no. Now it's, it's social media marketing, uh, chat GPT, <laughs> real estate stuff. And I'm, I so want to watch other real estate content and be like, oh, I like what they did. But I did it and now I'm stuck and now it's all ruined and it's now another source of, it's a business thing. So yeah. I like that. Strategy four, we're all talking about social media. Um, I want you to talk real quick on the importance of, of taking them from social media and getting them into your CRM. Okay. So... I know this isn't the direction you were going for, but but well, I want to talk about the, that importance. I, I think if if I could maybe reassign Please. the question. Please. Um, taking them from social media to real life. Sure. Right? Because in its own way, social media is somewhat of a CRM. Yep. I can see every message I've ever sent to somebody. It's in their name. I can see them send to me. I send to them. It's time and date stamped. Like within reason, it's its own CRM, right? So what, what I like to do is find opportunities to transition them from a virtual conversation to a real life conversation. So if uh, I've got a handful of friends that I, I invite to come to my house for barbecues and these are people that I've never had to my house before, right? Like these are people that I went to high school with They've gotten married. They've had kids. Our kids are similar in ages, go to different schools, but we both still live here in San Diego. Come over. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, um, but this is where I will utilize like what, what we do here at whistle to integrate business with my conversations that I've been having. So we have quarterly events mm -hmm. and we have, we, we just did a, a photos event, which was phenomenal. I've got such great feedback from that. Oh, that makes and my heart happy. It, well, it should because this is your baby. And yeah. I love that you guys put this together for us. So all these conversations that I've been having, how's school? Noticed your kids are in Arizona State now. How's that going? All that. Now I'm like, hey, we've got this thing going on. And when we announced we were doing it, you were the first person I thought of. Is so-and-so going to be back from Arizona around this time? Because it'd be really cool if you guys could do family photos on our dime. Yeah. By and large, everybody responded. A lot of people couldn't come because of the day and the time. Sure. Sure. But they were like, that's so cool. Let me know when the next one is. No, thank you. Oh, this is only for now and I hate you forever. <laughs> so I, I also do client giant, yep. right? So they, they get like a quarterly gift from me in the mail. Yep. Um, I just, and it's funny because I never know when those are going to hit. But then I start getting text messages from people that are like, Mike, this is so cool. Thanks a lot. I'm like, you're welcome, right? <laughs> yep. So I just got I hope a message. It was good. <laughs> Three days ago, I just got a message, and her name's Kaylin. She was like, "Mike, this is so cool. Thanks so much. You're like, you're like my favorite realtor." And I'm like, "Well, hopefully, I'm your only realtor." And she's like, "Well, of course." <laughs> and I'm like, "Hey, I know you couldn't make it to the family photo day, but we've got a pie giveaway with photos with Santa coming up." And she was like, "Oh my God, tell me the date. We are going to be there." So. Because of consistency, because I'm always in front of them, I've earned the right to invite them to these non-real estate related events that my real estate company is doing. So it's an, it's, it's an easy, soft introduction to my business, my office, my coworkers, 
And it's a very, like, not down your throat, but just kind of in front of your face mm -hmm. reminder that I'm in real estate. Yeah. And I, I think the, the, the gentle approach from that is, is much easier for people to accept. And what I love, I, I love how you tweaked it. And I want to say, I, I want to kind of bring it back before we end the show. Um, I was saying social to, to your CRM. You said social to real life. What's important is you have, you want to always be as m best you can own as much data as you can. Yes. Because if Facebook says one day, hey, we're done. We're shutting down. Zuckerberg went to the moon on a lizard planet. I don't yeah. know. Facebook and Instagram is done. And that and that's all you've done is communicate there. And you go, shit. Yeah. I don't have their, I don't have their phone number. I don't have their email. Yep. I have no, now my whole sphere of people that I actually know and communicated with and built this relationship. Yeah. I own none of it. And I don't even know how to get in contact with them. I've never been to their house. I don't know how to find them anymore. Yeah. LinkedIn maybe? Like whatever. Like, totally. So I have so, to start from scratch. Yeah. And that's horrible. So making sure you get that data and there's also lots of other reasons, but so you own it. So that way if Facebook decides to charge or TikTok gets shut down by the government or, totally. or whatever Things stuff Things that are happens, out of our control. Yeah. You still have a way to connect with someone and say, hey, remember Instagram is dead now, but this is Mike. You can talk to me here. Totally. So, all right. Strategy one, social media DM uh, within groups of 20 every day. Strategy two, focus on the five Ds and be a resource for them in their time of need. Most important there, resource for them in their time of need, not utilize their hurt or their life change to make you money. No, no, no. Be a resource for them. Yes. And don't be a, don't be a dick. Strategy three, uh, being intentional with your social media, uh, utilizing it as this is not me just randomly scrolling and counting. Yep, I did work today. Be intentional with it. And strategy four, social to real life. Right. Before we get to our whistle widget of the week, Mike, this was phenomenal. I I love doing podcasts with you. If you enjoyed this, please, 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 please uh, write us a review on your favorite podcast platform. It means the world to us to let, to just like when Mike said, I got so much good feedback from that, literally filled my cup um, because what we're doing people are seeing results from. So if you got value from this, you're seeing results from it, please let us know. Please share that in the YouTube comments, in on your uh, review platform. That genuinely helps us continue to make continue to make content. Um, feel free to go to thewhistleway.com. On there, you can join our Facebook group, our YouTube. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can join our private uh, newsletter, subscribe to our, our uh, podcast and join our referral network. As people leave San Diego, we need realtors to send them to. We would like that to be you. And you can learn more about uh, Kyle and my course where we teach you everything we know about uh, creating content for your community to help get you more buyer and seller opportunities. That's our Media Mayor Mastermind. That stuff is gold. The Thank Media you. Mayor Mastermind is amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm, it was something I'm really proud of building. It took dozens of hours to build, and oh, yeah. it takes plenty of time to go through, but there's so much content. It's mindset It's shifting. actionable it, content. Oh, it's, thank you. It's plug and play. You, you no, and I, 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 you and I have talked about this a lot, about when we go to conferences. I'm like, don't give me mindset. Give me yes. action. Yes. Give me action. Tell me what to do, and I'll do it. If, if you're that type of person, you and you need... You know you need to integrate video in your business. Yeah. MediaMayorMastermind.com. That's for you. Mike, before we get into our whistle widget of the week, I would love people to, uh, if they want to connect with you on a deeper level, learn more about your strategies, or maybe they just want to see how they, you communicate with people online, what's the best way for them to connect with you? Um, so Facebook or Instagram at the Mike Proctor uh, would probably be the easiest way to connect with me. Very cool. Yeah. Cool. So let's get into our whistle widget of the week. So our whistle widget of the week, this is something that we do in our business, saves us time, saves us money, makes us have more fun. Mike, I'll let you go first on this one. Uh, so mine is not so much business related. Um, so I, I am a wrestling coach for a local high school here in San Diego, and we utilize an app to communicate with all the parents and all the, uh, the athletes 
to make sure that we are all on the same page, that we all know what the schedules are and any communication that everybody needs to know. Uh, it's called the Band app. And I'm, I'm positive there's a whole lot of parents that watch this and listen to this. And uh, if you are like me and you have kids that are in athletics or you are a coach like me and you coach athletics, um, this band app is a lifesaver for communication and keeping all the parents and the coaches and the athletes on the same page um, because it's like herding cats usually, um, which Coachy would like because he loves cats. Um, but if you're like me, that's just you want to pull your hair out. So um, yeah, the band app is fantastic. You can upload documents. You can. Uh, it, it's very similar platform to like a Facebook um, because you like post and parents can post and you comment and like and share posts. Um, but yeah, it's it's nice to have communication all at one place for everybody. I absolutely love that. Yeah. Mine is, it was going to be dumb, and now it's actually really good. Uh, on Instagram, when, if you're thinking, okay, I want to be like Mike, um, good movie, uh, and I want to engage with people, and he gets his group of 20, you can do it via, I've seen people do it with, um, based on first name or last name, hey, this week I'm going to do every A, then every B. Uh, another way you can do it to make sure that you aren't losing touch, on Instagram, they have a really cool ability to see who you have interacted with least. So yeah. if you're like, hey, I'm doing my 20, but who am I missing? Who, who am I just keep forgetting? So you go into your Instagram, you click on, you go into your profile and click on following. So who you're following with, and there's different categories. Um, there's least interacted with. So it'll tell you the people that you have interacted with the least on Instagram. There's also most shown in feed, which is cool. So you can see who wow. you're seeing all the time. But I love this least interacted with. So that way, who am I neglecting? They're telling you exactly. These are the people you are neglecting on Instagram. Go through and fill this out, and then they're not going to be on least interacted with anymore. And you can keep refreshing that. That's my this. widget of this week. Isn't that cool? Yeah. No, I dig it. So um, thank you so much for watching this week's episode of the Real Estate Success Podcast, The Whistle Way. I'm Brian Kochi here with Mike Proctor. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Wait, wait. Before you leave, I wanna share some more tips and tricks that we're using in our business to take it to that next level. Just click right here. And don't forget to subscribe, click right here.